driving force is uh, increased racial, ethnic, religious diversity in the United States. And that's something that's not just happening uh, in urban America as urban America thinks it is. Uh, it's going on in every part of America, rural, urban, suburban. I was talking with a minister in North Carolina the last weekend, and she's a couple of years younger than I, and we were kind of talking about the culturally uh, the cultural disorientation of um, all of us baby boomers, you know, approaching retirement age. I don't know. We're not necessarily approaching retirement. We're approaching <laughs> retirement, <laughs> retirement age. <laughs> and, um, and, and, and then we started thinking about the next generation. And, and, and she said, you know, Lee, I never do weddings anymore um, that are not that do not include people of the same family from just a variety of religious and racial backgrounds. She said, the weddings I do, and she said in my own family, my grandchildren and my children, they're living out that kind of United Nations sort of feel that we had when we were uh, growing up. And it's true. And it's going on in Unitarian Universalist churches as well, 85% of our religious education programs include children of more than one race. That's something to be celebrated. It is a third driving force that, uh, that is driving uh, the religious, uh, that is driving religion in America today. The fourth, um, the, the fourth, uh, excuse me, students in India. Um, <laughs> the, fourth driving, <laughs> the fourth driving, of course, is a real uh, and increasing impact of digital, digital media and web technology <laughs> and religion. Do I really need to say too much more than that? I mean, when I sit in my classroom, it's not just me and the students who are bringing information into what we're discussing. It's every single website that they're on, and every, it's fantastic. It, it provides such an incredibly rich learning environment, and it's not just going on in the classroom. We're just processing information differently. We're connected differently than we ever have before. I, I have no idea where it's going. I just know that it's changing every way that we interact with one another, and every expectation it is democratizing the world in many ways. So these are the four driving forces. Uh, that These are the forces that are driving uh, all religious traditions, including Unitarian Universalism, deep into this post-denominational age, which I, I have to tell you, I kind of have been going into the post-denominational age uh, kicking and screaming. <laughs> I mean, my identity as a universalist and as a Unitarian Universalist has been uh, as important to me as my own family and actually couldn't ever really tell the difference uh, between my family and my church. It's not just that I called myself a Unitarian Universalist. I mean, I was just steeped in it. It's in my DNA. You know, first my mother and father, active lay leaders, my mother, religious education a director. Our family founded a fellowship. Um, I was an active leader in liberal religious youth on, on a regional and national level. My, my mother, um, uh, my minister went with me for my hearing when I petitioned for my conscientious uh, st uh, objector status during the Vietnam War. I mean, my sense of self was totally wrapped up in the denomination that was my home. It's what pulls me into ministry. It's what keeps me in ministry. So to face the decline of the denominational era has not been a simple academic exercise for me. It prompted and has prompted deep soul searching about who I am and what are my commitments that I've made both as a minister and as the president of a theological school that is denominationally 
It's taken a few years. I've struggled through it, but I've come to some realizations. Here's what I've come to. The ultimate aim of Unitarian Universalism was never to make other people call themselves Unitarian Universalists, or even more modestly to have the world know that there is this thing called Unitarian Universalism on the planet. Most basically, the important thing about Unitarian Universalism has always been the values that it embodies, the values that it carries forth. Most basically, the important thing about Unitarian Universalism has been extending those values into that larger world. And that's helped me. But first I want to tell you how I got to that realization. It was my experience with universalism that helped me get to that realization. You see, after the merger, in, well into my 20s as an adult, I sort of felt a sense of loss about no longer being a universalist exclusively. I understood the reasons for the merger, I believed it needed to happen, I thought that it actually enhanced both traditions, but it was this identity thing, as I referred to earlier, something by which I identified myself no longer existed. My place in the world did not feel quite the same. And then I entered ministry. And then I began to hear the stories about what brought new members into our church. It was darn close to 100% of the people who came to our church that voiced a universalist reason for trying it on. Nearly 100% of the people said, that they first began to doubt the religion of their upbringing by doubting that God would condemn to hell anyone of another faith tradition who lived and died without ever hearing of Christianity or who might have been too young when they died to have accepted Jesus into their hearts. That was the question that got them thinking in the first place that maybe there's a different way to think about theology and religion than the way that they had been taught when they were young. This is the question that drove every universalist from the beginning of the idea to the end of the movement. And I realized that those universalist values had never been lost those universalist values were alive and well, and they still are, I might add. With the post-denominational age at hand, whatever that means, it's time to think about what are our key Unitarian Universalist values. What are those values that have been entrusted to us that whether or not the movement continues far into the future, it will be important to extend those values into the world. For me, they are that there is no spiritual path without service to humanity, that the pursuit of justice and peace is the spiritual path. Our internal lives and our external commitments are completely that the religious and cultural differences among people can be factors in our own human liberation and not a threat to it. Indeed, difference presents opportunities to be enhanced if we know how to engage difference. We, we grow most authentically in relationship with people who are not just like us. As one of my parishioners once said, any idiot can form a community with people just like them. <laughs> the real trick 
is to form a community with people like this. That there's a place for reason and science in this world. Rational understanding does not undermine religious understanding. It tests great faith. It deepens faith. There is some truth in all the world's great religions. They speak to the universal impulse for meaning and purpose in every one of us. Religion is what connects us. It is not what separates us. My dream is for a world where those Unitarian Universalist values are embraced. For I believe that for the world to do so means that it's been left a better place than the ones that I and my generation inherited. That's also the dream of our school's faculty and our staff and all the people who support the work that we do at Meadville Lombard. And so we aim our students toward ministries that don't just provide the usual toolkit of preaching, ministering, and, and, uh, uh, and organizing. We aim them toward ministries that will allow them to take our values to the unaffiliated, to the spiritual but not religious, to the digital world, to communities of difference. Now the irony is that the post-denominational age needs Unitarian Universalist seminaries more than ever. Simply put, who else is going to shape our leaders in the context of these values? We can't expect the Methodists or the Lutherans or the Congregationalists to do that. God knows they've got their own problems without taking on ours. We need to do it. We are the stewards of those values. We are the people who will help our next generation of leaders promote them in the larger world. And so we're doing that at Meadville Lombard. That's what we're providing for our students along with teaching them to lead congregations and churches, along with teaching them how to lead through change and changing times. Remember we said, it's an uncertain future. If our students are going to help us move into it as ministers, we need to be able to help our communities move into it, holding us together rather than having change splinter us apart. Now it's important to say that the post-denominational age is bringing students to us who see life and service differently than, than students in the past had and whose life circumstances are different than students' life circumstances in the past. I want to make my point by telling you about a Meadville Lombard graduate who came to our school uh, right out of college. 